Welcome to the Mango Effect podcast, where every week we talk about the path to living a limitless life and having the freedom to do it your way. No topics are off limits. We get into the practical, the hypothetical, and the downright juicy stuff. I'm Mindy Rosser, your host and lifestyle cheerleader, and I'm here today to talk about the art of geo arbitrage when you set goals. So you may have heard of this term geo arbitrage. Some people will call it geographical arbitrage if you really want to make it longer. It is a word that a lot of people that are in the fire, so financial independence, retire early uh, type of mindset actually talk about quite a bit. And what it actually means is that you choose where you're going to live based on Okay, if I'm earning a certain salary or I'm making a certain wage, how is my cost of living in a certain geographical area? So you can actually apply geo arbitrage to multiple different locations and ways. There are a lot of ways to go about it. You can actually leave the country, you know, be an expat somewhere. If you live in a country where it is very expensive to live or a certain location where it's expensive to live, you could also simply move to a different state. For example, in the United States, there's 50 of them. You can pick a different state and stay inside of the country, but just move to a location that is a little cheaper, a little more economical. Or you could even do it within like certain areas, geographical areas. So where I live right now, I'm on the North Shore of Oahu, which is definitely one of the most expensive places on the entire island to live. And if I wanted to do geo arbitrage and not leave my island, a place that I could actually do that would be to either go into town, uh, which is Honolulu. There are certain spots in there if you're okay with living in an apartment or a studio, like a smaller space, where you could actually implement this strategy here on island without having to leave. Or you could move to the west side of the island. The west side of Oahu is a little bit more economical. So just kind of keeping in mind what I'm talking about today as we are talking about geo arbitrage, it's a concept that I think is not brand new, but it used to not be very sexy when people would talk about it. And now it's funny, I actually mentioned the topic to some friends of ours and they're really big into like real estate investing and, you know, they always want to talk money, like money moves, like what are you guys doing? And I'm like, we're going to do geo arbitrage. And they're like, Ooh, you can just see like their eyes light up, like, tell us more about this. Like, this sounds really exciting and cool. And basically, in the good old days, you just say, I'm just moving somewhere cheaper. You know, but when you say geo arbitrage, people go, oh, you must be very thoughtful. This must be part of a grander plan and strategy. So when it comes to geo arbitrage, this is something that my husband and I, partner and I, Mr. Jason and I, have been talking about for a little while now. And we actually looked at moving to a different country. I was looking at Bali. I might have mentioned it on the podcast. We even looked at like the Canary Islands, which is like the Hawaii of Europe. We've looked at a lot of other locations too, just to name a few. But when it comes to geo arbitrage and what our family actually enjoys and thrives in, we realized, okay, if we want to try this geo arbitrage thing and get a similar lifestyle, like what we have in Hawaii is pretty darn awesome. When it comes to lifestyle, like the climate is good. We love the island vibes. We like the lifestyle here. Um, just the cost of living. Very, very high. So, you know, there's there are some trade-offs. So looking at other locations that had very similar things to Hawaii, but maybe not at the price point. And what we kind of came to determine was that we really need to stay in country. It's, it's ideal for our family, health care purposes. We have certain medications that don't work so well. Or you'd be very hard-pressed to get them in certain areas and locations we were looking at medical care, all of that good stuff was really one of the big factors. And also having more options. I think when it comes to geo arbitrage, I think a lot of people think, oh, where is the cheapest place I can live that kind of mimics where I'm living now or where I would like to live. But there are a lot of other aspects that you got to take into consideration when it comes to a move, when it comes to leaving where you are now, especially if you're going to move to a different location that you are not familiar with, that maybe the cost of living is either higher or lower to where you are now. A lot of different factors to consider. And so for us, it's like, okay, if we're going to implement this strategy, where would be the best place to actually do this? So in looking at our different options, you heard me talk about, if you listened to the last episode, uh, the most recent episode where I talked about going back to school. That's part of the plan. So how do we get Mindy into school? And 
if Mindy is not able to work as much as she has been working and put as much into the business to, you know, do business development, get new clients, all of that good stuff, what are we going to do? You know, so it's like we have to kind of consider all of our different options. So we looked at staying here. I'll kind of take you through our process so you can see how this applies. And then also, oh, this might get you opening your eyes a little bit and maybe thinking of how you could implement this type of strategy. Uh, so we looked at staying on island and I could go to, you know, state school here. There's med school here. There's residency here. We could stay on island, kind of keep it all on the same spot and not have to leave. The downside to that is uh, my husband not working currently and actually going back to work in his profession, he would not have the same opportunities as he would have in a lot of other places. It's very limited for him and being able to get that consistent income, not something I really want to bet on here. So in looking at our options, like, huh, okay, so if Mindy gets really busy and she is trying to focus on school and med school is definitely something where you have to get good grades. So I need to really, really focus on that. How are we going to cover the nugget? Or in other words, how are we going to pay all the bills and make sure everything is covered and our lifestyle stays the same or similar to what we're doing now and in a way that sets us up long-term financially? So in thinking through all of this, we actually did a little bit more research. So for those of you who are familiar with climate change, climate change comes into the picture here because we actually are doing a little bit of research on that just because I was curious about living on Hawaii. And I'm like, eh, if we're going to consider buying a place here, I really should be aware of the issues that could come down the road. So looking at climate change and what could happen to the islands here based on things that are already in motion, you know, thinking in terms of 2050, is this the place that I really want to have my forever home? Is this a place where I could see my kids growing up and my grandkids after that? Is this going to be the same type of place as it is right now? And when I actually looked at all the data, I am not a scientist by any means, but when I did some digging, I just did not feel confident that the lifestyle that I have now is something that my kids could have in 20, 30 years. There are a lot of other things at play, and hopefully it does stay that way, but it may not. And so for me to be able to plant roots and say, hmm, you know, if I'm going to stay in a place, I don't want to have to worry about leaving. I don't want to have to worry too much about climate change affecting literally everything about the island. Currently, I'm in a flood zone. We've been evacuated once before. And if that was 10 times what it is now, that would not be a pleasant place to be, not a pleasant place to live. Uh, so thinking through all of this comes into the picture, too. So you can see when you're talking about where you're going to be, the actual physical place, if it is not where you are now, there is so much homework that you need to do to understand the area and what your family and what you as a human actually need. So this is like a really fun exercise because I have noticed in my history that every few years, no matter where I am, I'm always going through this process to confirm or not whether I'm in the right physical location. And I really enjoy going through this process because either I realize, yep, I'm in the right spot. I should stay put. This is the right place. Looking at our future ahead, we are there. And at some points in time, I question it. And I think it's so important that we don't stop questioning. A lot of times we get really comfortable. Things become you know, plug and play. And yes, it's good to have those moments too. But when you feel something inside of you, we talked about this a little bit in the last episode, when you feel something like, hey, I'm not quite sure what's not quite right, but I need to do some digging here. This is a really good time to examine your location. And are you in the right place to do what you need to do now moving forward and so looking okay the ultimate goal is for mindy to go back to school to you know shift careers down the road not immediately but down the road maybe keep the business going who knows and just really looking through this and figuring out what's best for our family where do we have the most options because that's what it comes down to in doing geo arbitrage right is not necessarily about moving to the cheapest possible place you can live you have to take into consideration all of the other factors that make your life good, that make your life consistent. And so this is something that you have to deeply think about. You have to think about all the angles. you got to talk it through with somebody that you trust to make sure that you are going to the right location because it takes a lot to move. It costs a lot in finances. It costs a lot in research. It costs a lot, I think, mentally, physically, emotionally, and not just for you, for everyone who's involved in part of the process of the move. So doing it smart 
is key. So as we're going through this process, we're, we always make lists. We make lists of pros and cons. What are we really looking to achieve? But always keeping in mind the end goal is X. And for us right now, the end goal is Mindy in school. So where is the best place for Mindy to be in school where the kids are happy? Jason is supported. He's not feeling stressed out. There is not as much financial pressure and we can actually thrive as a family. So in going through this process, there was one place I wanted to not be part of this discussion. I I was like, I don't ever want to go back to the mainland U.S. I don't want to go, I especially don't want to go back to where I came from, which is Chicagoland. Yes. So those of you who have known me for a while, you know this already. But Chicagoland is where I'm from originally. So right by the Great Lakes, all of that good stuff. I grew ju- grew up just outside Chicago. So it's cold there. That was one of the reasons it was it was a big deal. If you listen to the episode and why we moved to Hawaii, you will actually hear some of the reason why we, you know, decided to pick up and move here to Hawaii and some of the pros and cons of where I lived before. But looking at our options and looking at the end goal and looking at where we would thrive. I've got family there. I've got infrastructure. I've got familiarity. My partner and my kids have both lived there before because we lived there before we moved here to Hawaii. Uh, We did very well there. You can definitely, if you're smart, you can definitely stash up resources and cash. And, you know, two people are working, even not at the level that I'm currently working, you can still have a lot of margin. Like basically, if you compared where I live now to where we would be going, it's 40 percent the cost of living where I live now to where we would be moving. So just imagine the financial implications of that over time. And plus climate change, that's a big deal. The place that I wanna go, I really want my kids and grandkids and everything to kinda like all be around there and not be worried that it's gonna change dramatically and that this beautiful oasis that I'm on right now, you know, I don't know if it's gonna be there. So these are all things that I have taken into consideration that we have talked about. And so it's now it's a matter of waiting. Like we're in the process of looking at houses, trying to pick the right one, put in an offer, you know, the whole process where you're like waiting to find out. And I almost waited to record this because I'm like, ah, I should have a better idea of where we're going at that point in time when I record. But you know what? Sometimes it's really good to see the messy middle and to really hear what it's like to be immersed in this process where you are telling people, hey, I'm not sure if we're going to be around. I'm not sure when we're going, but it looks like we're headed this direction and probably going to be leaving this area. So talking with family, with friends, with people we trust, people who interact with our kids, that part is always challenging. And then just making it okay for the family. Like everybody loves living here. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Like the lifestyle is epic. I will not lie there. (laughs) But really thinking in terms of, okay, 10 years from now, am I going to look back on this moment and regret the fact that I had an opportunity to make our family's life better, to act in accordance with my convictions, to follow my heart, to follow my intuition, and really do what I'm called to do right now. And that's as as unsexy as it is, that's going back to school, you know, and seeing where that path leads. I don't know exactly where it's going to lead, but I know it's going to lead me one step closer to where I'm supposed to be. And then comes that point where you are trusting yourself. You really do have to trust yourself. You really have to do enough soul searching because uprooting everything and changing everything for a long-term goal is a big deal. And so really giving it some thought, consideration, and doing some due diligence is key. So here we are. We're right now in paradise. We're living the island lifestyle. And we're looking at the future thinking, okay, how do we take what we've learned in this place back with us? Because that's something that we can do. And it's something I never really thought about much in prior moves. Like, okay, how can I take the best parts of this place with me? Because Hawaii will always be a part of me. I even have uh, a Polynesian tattoo on my leg, on my calf, which is really, really special. And it's not something I regret because I'm taking the island with me. There's so much that I have learned from this place that no matter where I go, no matter where we actually end up in the future, near future, long-term future, wherever that may be, I'm taking this place with me. I'm taking the best parts of this place with me. And so I think acknowledging that and recognizing that whenever you are making a move, you're not leaving every single thing behind and changing everything. You are always taking a piece of that with you to the next place. 
And I think that's a beautiful thing. And thinking in terms of the book I'm writing, The Mango Effect, like I, one of the first things I thought about was like, oh, no, if I'm not in Hawaii, I can't talk about mangoes. Like, no, I still love mangoes, whether I'm in Hawaii, whether I'm in California, whether I'm in New York. I've always liked mangoes. It doesn't matter where I am. I love mangoes. The mango effect is not specific to your actual location. You don't have to have a mango tree in your backyard to experience it. You don't have to live on an island to experience it. It is something that lives inside of you. It's a state of mind. It's a state of being. And I think that's so key because sometimes we get caught up in location or change or it's a career change and you're shifting everything or maybe you're in a career pivot or you're starting a business or you're starting a family. Whatever that may be for you, these same principles apply. You're thinking really, really hard about this decision that you are about to make. You're thinking, what am I missing here? Is there anything else I'm not considering that I should consider? Who are the people that are in my corner who are rooting for me and want the best for me? Can they provide some wisdom here? And really doing all of that talking, soul searching, journaling, writing, whatever it is for you to process this. Because something like geo arbitrage is a really, really big deal. And when you're going to implement it, there are a lot of implications. There are a lot of messy middles that you're going to go through. You know, for us right now, we're in the process of, you know, trying to buy a house. And when you are owning, when you own your own business, I'm just saying, when you own your own business and you are not just a straight up W-2 employee who's been working for the same employer for one to two years, it gets a little trickier when you are working with a lender and on paper. But guess what? We've already done it. This will be our third time. We've already done it successfully a couple of times in similar circumstances. So trusting that we are headed in the right direction and whether you're a little bit woo-woo, like the universe will deliver, or whether you think, okay, just one step at a time. It literally is just one step at a time. Like, okay, how do we get closer to our goal? All right, what's the next step? All right, I can't rush this process. It's going to happen in the time it's meant to happen. But I know that I am headed in the direction. I am listening to my gut. I am listening to the people around me. I am also trying to really think ahead about legacy. And that's something I just cannot shake. Lately, I've given a lot of thought to legacy and my kids, grandkids, future grandkids. I don't have any grandkids yet. But all of that is really a big part of this decision, thinking, okay, what am I passing on to them? Am I showing them that, oh, you know, I could just stick with what I'm doing. They could see me you know, happy. I'm happy enough. I love living here, but not really pushing towards where my heart is. Like once I have that realization, once I've actually done some soul searching, it's like, okay, this is the direction. We got to take a little bit of a shift here and just align with that goal. And when your kids or people that are in your life, see you actually take action towards that. That's powerful. When they say, Oh, my mom is 30 something and she's going back to school that's sick, mom. Like amazing. Wow. Okay. You're really all about this. This is important. This is something meaningful and you are following it. I think that's important. So really thinking about our legacy, whether you have a family, whether you don't, whether it's other people in your life, you don't have to be with a partner or have kids to leave a legacy, but what impact are you leaving for the people that are around you? Are you in the right place to do that? And we thought about it. We're like, yep, we could stay here. You know, we'd probably have to, you know, scrimp and save and try to figure out how to make ends meet. But we could do it. We could definitely do it. We've been doing it this long. We could definitely get all the way through med school and residency and make it happen. It wouldn't be pretty, but we could do it. Or we could actually put ourselves in a better position where there would be less stress, where money would not be like the first thing on our minds. Like, are we going to make rent this month? where we wouldn't be worried about climate change, where we wouldn't be worried about certain other elements. And so really having to weight those against each other, like, okay, how big of a deal is it? You know, having the climate, having the sunshine, okay, how can we duplicate that where we're going? Would taking some surf trips, you know, scratch the surfing itch. Come to find out, I do not have to give up surfing to live in Northwest Indiana, which I had no idea. I grew up there. I should know this, right? I grew up there and I had no idea that people surfed. And there's like a whole surfing community of like Great Lakes surfers that surf the Great Lakes. And 
I had no idea about this. So just realizing that, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can take surfing to a whole different level. Be all hardcore and Midwestern about it. Won't be in my uh, bikini and very thin wetsuit. It'll definitely be a very thick wetsuit with, you know, gloves and boots and all that good stuff, but it's still surfing. So all of this different stuff has come out and it's been a really interesting discovery process. And you know what I really like about it too is just feeling resilient enough to be able to make a shift like this and feel confident that we can do it. We've done it many, many times as a family. And I think each time that we've done it, it has helped our family grow closer and we have been the better because of it. It's not like we've ever made a move that we regretted. It's like, I don't regret moving here. You could say, well, you should have just stayed in Indiana. You should have never come to Hawaii. Like, no, I actually learned how much the water is a part of my life now. And so how can I duplicate that where I'm going next? Great. There's a big body of water. Yes, I can technically surf. Yes, I can take a surf trip. Yes, I can do wake surfing or wakeboarding and we could get a boat and go on the lake. So there are ways to duplicate what I've been doing here that makes our lifestyle so good there. And yes, it's going to be cold. But guess what? There's a thing called a sauna and the hot tub that are pretty awesome. You know, so it's kind of like getting creative, I think, in thinking in terms of, okay, how do I duplicate the very best parts of this lifestyle and take it with me? There's got to be a way. Sometimes you have to think outside the box, but that's okay. That's what makes life an adventure. And that's what this is about. It's about adventure. It's about learning. It's about growing. It's about discovering things about yourself you didn't even know were there. And when certain things that have laid dormant for so long come to the surface, you have to pay attention. You have to read the signs. You have to see it. And you have to take action. When you know, when you are being mindful, when you decide that you are like, okay, I'm, I'm tuning into my inner self. This is the direction I need to go next. And sometimes that's not a forever direction. And I think sometimes we get frustrated with ourselves because we hear these stories of people who when they were a little kid, knew they were going to become an astronaut. And so they did all the things right all the way, and then they're happy being an astronaut, and great. You know, like they have like this perfect career path. Most of us are not like that. So do not compare yourself to those people that are doing what you think is like, oh, if I could have just followed that path, I would have been there so much quicker. Like in my idea here with, okay, I'm, you know, in my 30s, and going back to school to become a psychiatrist. Like all of the psychiatrists right now that are my age have a bazillion more years of experience than I do. So what am I going to bring to the table? You know, it's like these doubts and stuff come into your head. But then you think, you know what? That's the direction I'm going to head. That's what I feel is right in my heart. I'm going to go that direction. And if the universe or whatever else you want to call it, if things take me down that road, I think just heading in that direction the path will show itself. And so when you trust that you are headed in the right direction, it doesn't have to be that your initial idea is the actual end goal. Like 10, 12 years, years from now, do I know 100% for sure if I'm going to be a psychiatrist practicing in the area where I think I'm going to be? No, I don't know this. But you know what? I know the next step is I need to get to the place where I can be in the right school, where I can actually start getting my degree. That will get me one step closer. So one step at a time. And if something shifts along the way and takes me in just a teeny bit of a different direction, that's okay too. It's all about taking that next step. And when it comes to implementing this geo-arbitrage strategy, really think it through. It's it's something that I think can be very powerful for people, but you have to know what your non-negotiables are. For us, it was healthcare. We had to go to a place that had good healthcare because Going to a different country, it's just too spotty. I don't know enough people in the countries I wanted to go to to really feel safe in making that type of move for the mental well-being of my family. So for me, it's like, okay, well, let's look within the states and figure out the best spot. What would be the most familiar? Where could I go to good education? And it's like, all right, we're going back to where we came from. And everyone there is probably going to ask us, why did you come back from Hawaii? And you have to be ready with your answer to tell them. But I think I have a new sense of appreciation for that area. I also have a new sense of appreciation for all that we discovered here, for the Hawaiian lifestyle, for the the things that I've learned just about culture and respect and aloha and all of these different elements, surfing. I mean, surfing is probably one of the best things that's ever happened to me. I just have never connected with nature in that way. And when I learned how to surf, I'm like, oh, this is my connection to nature. I need to be in the water. And if I'm in the Great Lakes, freezing, but wearing a very thick wetsuit, 
that might do the trick. So I'll keep you posted on that one, though. I, I don't think my partner is excited about uh, surfing in the middle of winter as I am. I'm like all excited. I'm like, oh, I'm going to practice my cold adaptation. I'm going to take my cold showers and get myself ready. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I will definitely keep you posted. But anyhow, back on the topic of geo arbitrage. If that's something that you want to explore, do it. Do it. And it doesn't hurt just to do some research. Like if you're curious about something, follow your curiosity because you never know where it's going to lead. If you're curious, like, huh, okay, if you live in a big metropolitan area, cost of living is pretty high. Maybe you want to move to the suburbs of that area and commute a little bit more. Or maybe you want to move to a completely different part of whatever country you are living in currently. Or maybe you want to live in a different country. I mean, in a perfect world, I'd love to live in a different country. Like, that's like my ideal vision. And maybe at some point in time, that will happen. For now, though, I know it's best for me to be inside of the U.S., the U.S. of A., and wherever that may be, it will show in time. Like, we're looking for the place right now where we're going to land. And who knows, it might be by the beginning of next year where I will be talking to you from a different spot and letting you know how cold it is in that spot. Uh, anyhow, I just wanted to have this conversation and talk about it because I think it's something that some people are really familiar with and some people are not. And then a lot of you have been asking questions about area and why we moved here. And so I really want to keep you posted. Like, this is what we're doing. This is why you moved here. This is why we're moving back. And all of the stuff that I've learned in between, all of the beautiful lessons and everything that I can take from this island and bring it back to where I came from, I think is it's a gift. And I'm really, really grateful, I think, for the time that we've had here, almost four years. And I'm excited to come back. Like, we have friends here, so taking a surf trip here wouldn't be too difficult. So I will definitely keep you posted. But in the meantime... Thank you for tuning in today. Like, are you looking at moving? Are you looking at doing something like this with geo arbitrage? And maybe it's something along the lines of like a career shift or something that you've been looking at and you're like, oh, I would do this, but the money is not as good, but that's really where your heart is. Or maybe it's that you have to move to actually do that type of career. Or you have to go back to school or get some new training to do that type of career. I think all of us are going through a lot of questions right now. It's that time of the the planet, the way that it's, you know, changing, I think just a lot that's happened since the pandemic. A lot of us are asking a lot of hard questions. And this one comes up a lot for people that I'm talking with these days. So I'm curious to hear your take on the topic. So DM me on Instagram at Mango Effect Podcast if you want to chat about it. And let's encourage and inspire each other this week. If you like what you hear, Please subscribe to the Mango Effect podcast wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss an episode. And if you love the show, feel free to leave it a five-star review. That will definitely help us as we grow. All right. I will talk with you in the next episode. Stay tuned.